Did the magistrate make the right call? And what can we expect to happen next week? Joining me now, our Legal Eagle panel, the Manhattan Institute's Director of Constitutional Studies, Ilya Shapiro, and criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, Randy Zellin. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Um, so, Ilya, I will start with you. I think the media outlets make a very good case. The American people uh, deserve to see something because this is unprecedented. We are in uncharted territory. Uh, so we should have a gander at something because this level of transparency uh, automatically breeds distrust or lack of transparency, opacity. <laughs> well, I mean, first, Kennedy, I don't think Judge Reinhardt sounds like a, an English jurist from the 1850, although that was amusing, uh, your reading of the transcript. Uh, but uh, it, we are, you're right, it's unprecedented. This is not your typical case. In the typical criminal investigation, uh, you would never consider releasing an affidavit, uh, a warrant application, even even the warrant itself and the items that they seized, unusual for that to be released before there are charges made or a decision not to charge. Uh, but as you said, uncharted uh, waters, and we have to consider the interests of the public and the Justice Department, you know, has to eventually put up or shut up. This drip, drip cannot go on forever. It's not uh, hurting, it's not helping anybody's cause. And it also, um, it doesn't lend itself to the level of urgency that we were promised by the attorney general, that this was so important, this was so incredibly dire, uh, that it had to be acted upon uh, with the most extreme means available, which was, of course, the raid. So, Randy, what do redactions do uh, to the items that are now still under seal? What's probably most important in terms of having been redacted are going to be the names of the sources who provided the information as to where this stuff was going to be found. Because remember, you're going to have someone from law enforcement who swears out the affidavit. Now, that name may very well be redacted as well. But certainly on top of that redaction, you will have the redaction of the person who told law enforcement, this is what you're going to find, the top secret leather binder, and here is where you're going to find it. That is what is going to be of most value to the Trump team. And that will be what is most closely safeguarded by the government. Because remember, you've got a couple of competing interests here. You've got the public's right to know. Mm. You've got the government's right to their investigation not getting screwed up. And you have Trump wanting to know who's screwing him over. Well, I, I think they probably make a better case. Uh, you know, there was this kind of subversive implication that there were, you know, nuclear secrets and the Espionage Act. It's like nukes and espionage, like, oh, <laughs> he's, he's our latest Rosenberg. Uh, so that wasn't good. But the justification, that wasn't the justification that the DOJ is using to try and keep these things under wraps. They're saying that they don't want, and they use the term amateur sleuths to figure anything out. It's like, I don't, I don't know if that's a good enough reason to uh, well, keep yeah. things from view. I and mean, the, 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 the devil will be in the details. If, if what the government submits is completely black, blacked out pages with you know one or two words here or there, that's not gonna be good enough. And the, the judge is gonna tell them to eat glass at that point. Uh, but what Trump is interested, it's, it's interesting this discussion, and I agree, Trump is most interested in knowing who is screwing him over. Well, that's not what the judge is going to want to release. He's going to want to release what are the damaging allegations, because ultimately the whole judgment of whether what the Justice Department and FBI are doing here is kosher comes yeah. down to uh, are there serious underlying crimes beyond mishandling classified information, which I don't think Merrick Garland would have approved a raid if that was the sole uh, crime that they were investigating. You would think, but Maggie Haberman from The New York Times says that she thinks that a lot of this is overblown and, and the former president just really likes tchotchkes, uh, which I also <laughs> love. And I always wear 16 pieces of flair. Um, unfortunately, we have to go, but I want to have you both back very soon because you're smart and wonderful. And I believe Randy is on vacation and he's going to buy us all a daiquiri later in the show. So thank you, Randy and Elliot. No matter where I am, I'm always here for you. Yeah. Uh, his, I, his I'm now off to play on. tennis. So there you go. Hey, man, you can play tennis with a daiquiri in one hand. I've seen it. All right. Thank you both. <laughs>